Oh, hey guys. So following up yet again on the conclusion that we came to for where to place efficient hardware in a pulling system. On a simple system, uh, we said that the math, when you do a force diagram, it shows put your most efficient hardware at the input. Um, but I made a post uh, last week showing a couple different compound systems. The first was a three to one pulling on a two to one and then the second was reversed, so a two to one pulling on a three to one. And in those two scenarios, uh, when you do the math with a force diagram, um, in both cases, the math actually says, put your most efficient hardware at the input of the highest multiplier in the system, which in those cases was a three to one. Um, but uh, I mean, doing, doing that math on paper is one thing, but actually taking that out in the field and applying it and seeing how that actually works out is quite another. So that's what I wanted to take a look at today. I have uh, the two load cells and I have uh, a couple systems here to set up and uh, we're gonna take a look at those. Um, but before we do, I just want to show you the load cells and uh, we, can, we can make sure, cause I had a, a problem the other day with calibration here. So here's my two load cells. So the line scale is the reading zero kilonewtons. The enforcer is reading negative 0 0.02 to negative 0 0.04. This one is reading 0 0.84, 0 0.85, and this one's reading 0 0.8, 0 0.82. Okay, so that's about as good as it gets for these right now. So for this first test, I'm going to get it all set up just with carabiners and then I will show you uh, what I'm talking about. It's going to be a, a three to one pulling on a two to one and I'm going to have a one pulley and I have the option of putting the pulley in one of three places. Okay, so give me a second here. We'll get this set up. Okay, so this tree here is going to function as our load and there's a load cell down there. And this tree here is our anchor tree. Okay, the distance between them is around 25 feet, about eight meters. So what I have right now is the orange rope is set up as a two to one. So it terminates down here at the anchor and it runs all the way across to the load end on a carabiner and then it runs back to the middle and ends at another carabiner. Okay, so the orange rope is a two to one and on the two to one, I'm pulling with a three to one. So the blue and yellow rope is set up as a three to one, which starts here, the terminal end is here. It runs back to the anchor to another carabiner. It makes the turn comes back to the middle right here, makes the turn to the input, right? So the input here is my fiddle block. So right now what I have is a three to one pulling on a two to one and everything is running on these DMM oval aluminum carabiners, right? So there's three carabiners. So the way that I've set this up, I'm marking the middle one is point A, the one at the back on the three to one right here, this is point B, and then the far end on the load carabiner that is point C. So the question is, if I could swap out, if I could add in rather a Pinto rig pulley at at any three of those three points, A, B, or C, where should I add it to get the most pull, the, on the, the total pull on the system to maximize, right? So the math says, for this system, the math says point A. It says right in the middle here on the input of the three to one is where the pulley should go. Um, so right now what I have on the input I had this cranked to one kilonewton, but it's uh, settling and stretching. We'll call it 0.94 right now. So 
So this is the baseline with all carabiners, 0.94, and the output is around 2.9. Okay. So I'll put some math on the screen there. So that's the starting point. Now I'm going to uh, add the pulley. I'm gonna start at point A and we'll see how that changes the pull, okay? Okay, so exact same system. I've just added a pulley into the middle here at point A and I moved the terminal uh, onto the becket of the pulley just to keep things aligned a, a bit better, okay? So exact same system. Now my input is 0.96 and my output is right around four kilonewtons, okay? So next I'm gonna take the pulley out and go back to carabiner here at A. I'm gonna move the pulley to point B, which is the turn at the back for the three to one. Okay, give me a second. Okay, so again, exact same system, but I've moved the pulley back to point B, right? So on an input of 0.94, Our output is 3.61. Okay, and then the last variation for this setup is I'm going to move that pulley from B to C, which is the two to one here on the load end, okay? Okay, so now point C has the pulley Point A is a carabiner, and point B is also a carabiner, all right? So, on an input of 1.04 kilonewtons, my output is 4.1. Okay, so I will flash some, uh, some math on the screen there for you guys. But so that is this scenario that I was describing the other day. Um, a three to one pulling on a two to one. If we could insert a pulley at some point, one of three points, where would it impact the efficiency the most, okay? Uh, give me a minute here. I'm going to set up the opposite system. I'm going to set up a three to one with a two to one pulling on it. Okay. All right, guys. So here is the second scenario. Uh, what I have set up is a three to one, which is here. So it starts here at the load. It runs all the way back to a carabiner right and then it runs all the way back to where it started at the carabiner okay and it runs down into the middle here so that's my three to one and then on the input of the three to one i've put a carabiner on a prusik and then i ha have a two to one so the orange starts at the anchor it runs to here on the carabiner, and then it goes to my input, which is the fiddle block. Okay, so the way that I've labeled this on the diagram is the input to, to the three to one is point A. The change of direction for the three to one is point B, and the two to one here is point C, okay? So, just to give us a baseline of what this is pulling, if I've input about 0.92 kilonewtons, right now this is outputting 
right around three kilonewtons, okay? Um, I should have mentioned at the beginning, uh, both of these systems, these compound systems, work out to a theoretical six to one. There's a, a two to one pulling on a three to one, you just multiply them, and a three to one pulling on a two to one, okay? Um, anyway, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this setup. I'm gonna, one by one, I'm gonna replace a pulley in place of a carabiner. I'm gonna start at point A, which was down at the, uh, at the load end there, the beginning of the three to one, okay? So I've added a pulley to point A, which is the input of the three to one. This is point C, this is the two to one, which is the carabiner, and this is the change of direction for the three to one carabiner, okay? So with an input of 0.96 kilonewtons, we have an output of 4.05 kilonewtons. Okay, so I've moved the pulley. Now it's at the change of direction for the three to one. We call this point B with an input of 0 0.90. We have an output of about three Wow, it's fluctuating a lot, but 3.4. I'm just going to call it 3.4. Okay. And then for the last example, I am going to put the pulley at the input of the 2 to 1. So remember, uh, on a simple system, you want the efficient hardware as close to the input as possible. And that is this point, point C, which is the input of the two to one. But when we do the math, it says that it's not actually where you want it. So we're gonna find out, okay? Give me a second. Okay, for the last test, we have the pulley at point C, which is the input for the two to one. And the other two points are back to carabiners. So on an input of one kilonewton, we have an output of 3.85 kilonewtons, okay? So, uh, that was a lot of moving stuff around. Um, I'm gonna go do some math and I'll be right with you. All right, guys, so the results are in. I'm gonna put the, uh, some numbers on the screen for you. But uh, a, a week ago, I did a video called Where Should You Add Pulleys to a Trucker Sitch? And in that video, I showed you how I would use math to figure out uh, how the forces flow through a system. Um, and that's what I did for this example on paper. Uh, so if you look at this first example here, uh, with a three to one pulling on a two to one, the way that it's marked um, on paper, it should have shown that point A was the uh, the best place to put your uh, your most efficient hardware. And when we actually tested it in the field, that is how it worked out. Um, and then the second example, which was a two to one pulling on a three to one. Uh, this confused a lot of people when I posted it because the input is actually the two to one, but when you do it on paper, on a force diagram, it shows that the, the, uh, the pulley should actually be at point A, which is the input of the three to one. So then today I was able to test that, and in fact that is how it worked out. Point A was, uh, did give us the, the best resultant pull. So that's, uh, that's confirmation for me that uh, that figuring things out in this way on paper with a force diagram uh, really does work. It does translate into the real world. Um, so as I said before, on a simple 
mechanical advantage system where you have uh, some type, you know, a two to one or a three to one or a five to one or whatever, just connected to a pull line. In that scenario, the most efficient hardware should be at the input. Um, but it appears to be in the, in the situation of a compound mechanical advantage system, uh, the, the most efficient hardware should be at the input of the highest multiplier. So in, the, in these two cases that we just tested, the highest multiplier is the three to one over the two to one. Uh, and so it didn't matter how we arranged it. In both cases, the input of the three to one having the pulley really did translate into the uh, the most resultant pull. So that's really interesting to me. Uh, I'm really glad that I got to test that and share that with you guys. So hopefully that gets you thinking, gives you some ideas, uh, and hopefully you can get some value out of it. All right, so until next time.